for the past two, three days. As usual, I want to start with the same normal thing because I always feel that if you know normal, abnormality is nothing. I'll keep doing this till every one of you answers all the five important structures, right? So what are these round, round things called as? Capillaries. Capillaries. Super. So the space between capillaries, the pink area is called as? Mesangium. Perfect. That's mesangium, right? So the function of capillary is to filter. It filters and produces urine. And urine will be in this white color space. The space is called as? Bowman. Bowman, Bowman space. space. Perfect. Urinary space or Bowman space, right? Any space is lined by visceral and parietal layers. Visceral is very close to the capillary. This layer is called a visceral epithelial cell. The other name is? What's the other name for visceral epithelial cell? We also call them podocytes or put process. Can we see a podocyte in light microscopy? No, sir. Electron we, microscope. Right, perfect. And this one, the one which is away from the glomerulus, we call it a parietal epithelial cell. There are blue dots there. Those are parietal epithelial cells, right? So we have five structures. All these five are very, very important for us. Capillary will always be empty. Vessel epithelium, podocytes of food process, not seen on light microscopy. Parietal epithelium, far away from it. Mesangium in the center and Bowman is clear, right? Okay, perfect. Now we did read about PSGN. We saw about minimal chain disease. We saw about IgN nephropathy and, and about uh, membranous glomerulus. Four diseases we have seen, right? So let's go to the same four things, whatever we have seen till now. Then we'll go quickly to RPG. Post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, it's a bacterial infection. Any bacterial infection will undoubtedly have neutrophils. So in a biopsy, if you see blue color, blue is always nuclear. Bend blue like lobes in a kidney biopsy, in a glomerulus, think of PSGN, right? And history will be nephritic or nephrotic? PSGN is pure. Nephritic syndrome, you'll have hematuria or the cola colored urine. The most important thing is you'll have a lag time. It will not happen immediately. There'll be a lag time. One to three weeks. For easy example, we said two weeks and two days for IgN nephropathy. Fine. Okay. That's about PSGN. Then we came to nephrotic syndrome, MCD. MCD is the most common nephrotic syndrome in children. Treatment is steroids. Pathogenesis, like I said, destruction of the food process. If food process is gone, the disease will be nephritic, nephrotic. It'll be nephrotic. So the patient will have a massive proteinuria, selective albuminuria. Because of the albumin reduced, you'll have edema. And the renal edema is mostly in and around the eye uh, ball. So it's periorbital or facial edema, right? Electron microscopy always be black and gray in color. These projections, finger-like projections, are called as podocytes. They look like toes. So we call them podocytes, right? Okay, and this is the electron microscopy of minimal chain disease. Where there's no podocyte, everything has been blunted. Okay. Third one, what we saw was membranous glomerulonephritis. It's an autoimmune disease. Predominantly, I can see them secondary to hepatitis, few drugs, but 85% of them are autoimmune. So we'll go with the predominant one, right? Against PLA2R receptor, phospholipase A2 receptor. Every autoimmune disorder, acute or chronic? Chronic. It's under chronic. So it has to be IgG, chronic immunoglobulin. And this will bind to the antigen, which will be on the food process. When the antigen antibody reaction happens, it will destroy the food process. If the food process is destroyed, nephritic, nephrotic. Have a clear cut of an nephrotic syndrome. Anything which damages food process, that's what we saw, will cause nephrotic syndrome. Anything which will damage GBM, that's the barrier for the RBC, will be nephritic syndrome. Right? Okay. So once we have the IgG deposited here, we have pink color because IgG is immunoglobulin, which is a protein. So the only thing which will happen is from a normal capillary, it will look like a thick pink capillary. Thick pink capillary is called as membrane. Like a membrane, membrane is glomerulonephritis. Left hand side, this is normal. And that's obviously MJ. You can easily see that capillary is definitely thick. If I don't have normal in the question, how do I identify it's thick? Go for the tubular basement membrane. Tubular basement membrane and the glomerular membrane is almost same thickness. Definitely here, tubule is thin. Glomerulus is thick, so by default we call it thick glomerulus and membranous glomerulonephritis, right? Last one what we wrote was IgA or Berger's disease. Someone asked me yesterday, B U E R G E R. Okay, there's one more disease called B U E R G E R, Berger's disease. This is thromboangiitis obliterans, which is a type of vasculitis, right? Seen in smoking and all those things, right? IgA nephropathy, I'm going to have excess of IgA. Any mucosal disease will cause more IgA. We call them mucosal immunoglobulin or secretory immunoglobulin, right? IgA deposits the mesangium. It will activate complements. 
C5 is a powerful chemo tactic factor. You guys said chemo taxes means attracting WBCs. So they're going to attract WBCs to the mesangium. When WBCs come outside to the mesangium, they will damage GBM by default. So it causes nephritic syndrome again, right? So how do I differentiate? Because there are two diseases. Both can be secondary to URI. Just a way to remember, PSGN will always have a lag time. If there's a lag time, I think of a PSGN minimum one to three weeks, but something is there. IG nephropathy will not have a lag time. So ease for remembering two weeks, two days, hematuria, you think of IgA, two days, two weeks recover PSG, right? So here, again, this pink is normal, the mesangium, you can definitely see here, mesangium is bigger here, right? So microscopy is mesangial expansion and definitely you can also see more blue dots, mesangial hypercellate, right? This is what we have seen till now. Right, let's go to next guy, RPGN. Can anyone expand RPGN? I'm sure you must have read about RPGN. GN stands for glomerulonephritis, right? What does RP stand for? RP rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, right? GN I'm not writing because you know it's glomerulonephritis, right? There's one more name for it. We'll look at the name very soon. It's rapidly progressing, right? But can I say glomerulus is a vessel? Yes, no, maybe. The entire glomerulus. Can I say it's nothing but a vessel? They're capillaries, right? Yes, doc. Perfect. So what is the worst thing which can happen to capillary? Rupture. And that's it. That's the pathogenesis. You think normally. The only problem for you is you are hesitant whether your thought process will be wrong. This is a safe space. You can make any number of mistakes here. What you said is absolutely right. Here, the pathogenesis is nothing but a rupture of glomerulus. Okay, simple. I'm going to have a rupture of the entire GBM. Because like we saw, GBM was the permanent one. That's getting ruptured. So what do you think? Nephritic, nephrotic? Nephritic. Nephritic, right. So for me here, actually nephritic, nephrotic is not a concern. I'll tell you why. Imagine... This is a normal capillary. Every capillary here ruptures. Do you think glomerulus will function? No, no. No. So it's not in one glomerulus. Multiple glomerulus in the kidney, everything ruptures at the same time. So what will be the problem? Renal function will become very bad or it will be normal? It will be very bad, right? Bad. That's, that's why I have the name. Rapidly progressive. Because of this rupture of GVM, the entire renal function will become abnormal. Obviously, kidney will not function. And how do I know it is RPGN clinically is when you have history, let's assume today, what is one uh, lab investigation value will rely on for kidney function test? When you take a kidney function test, what values you will look for? GFR. Anything apart from GFR? For proteins. Anything apart from proteins? Hematuria. Uh, kidney function. I'm taking a blood test, looking for a renal function test. What all values you'll do? You must have done a RFT for your parents, someone, right? Have you heard about blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine? You must have yeah. heard about creatinine for sure, right? Perfect. So my goal is creatinine. Remember, GFR is also a very, very important thing. GFR is for chronic disease. Creatinine is for acute disease. It's always like that, right? Let's assume creatinine today is 2 milligram percentage. 2 is itself high, but let's assume because the patient has a kidney disease, right? So within 48 hours, okay? This is what I say is a rapid progression. It will happen within less than that, but maximum duration given for me is 48 hours. Within 48 hours, let's say the creatinine becomes 8 milligram percentage. Can I say it's an acute change? It's a very rapid change. It is, right? So, this is the maximum time limit given. You can have a question saying creatinine was yesterday 2 milligram. Today, 24 hours, it became 8. It's okay for me. 48 hours is the maximum time given for me. So, within 48 hours, I have a change. I can call it rapid progression. I'm going to change this question. I'm saying 2 grams today. After 2 months, it becomes 8 grams milligram percentage. Is it rapid or not? Not. Perfect. This I want you to remember. 
two months is not rapid. I should have have every change within two days max. So in that way, I can call it a very rapid progression. That's why the name came. The creatinine or the renal function changes very rapidly. We call it rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Right? There's nothing to memorize. People saw the disease, named it. Unfortunately, we are born old later. Right? That's why these problems are happening. Right? Now, you will tell me the treatment. You have a patient coming to you with kidney almost shut down, not functioning at all. What will you do? This is what? Dialysis. Perfect. That's all. My kidney is shut down. I cannot arrange for an immediately replacement kidney. It's not possible, right? The perfect thing is I go for dialysis. You will read this when you come to medicine. Immediate dialysis. Oh, to tide over the crisis. Later on, we'll see what's the problem. But 8 milligram, if kidney is not able to function within a week, all the toxin will accumulate. My body will have encephalopathy, will have cardiac problem. The patient will die, right? So anything acute renal failure suddenly happening, go for immediate dialysis, right? Perfect. Okay. Now let's come to the pathogenesis. My GBM is ruptured. You guys only said GBM is or glomerulus is capillary. If a capillary leave glomerulus anywhere in the body ruptures, what's the next step? After bleeding, what will happen? I won't ask difficult questions till whatever comes to mind. A blood vessel is ruptured. What will happen? Imagine. Uh, after, after bleeding, it is blood. What will be the next thing? A capillary in my finger has ruptured or, or I have a cut. I am bleeding. What is the next step? Thrombosis. That's all. I'll have a clot formation, right? Can I say every clot in my body is fibrin clot? It's made of fibrin or fibrin, however you want to say, right? I'll have fibrin clot. So once the capillary ruptures, I'll have a clot or a thrombus that's made of fibrin. Now tell me, where do you think the fibrin clot will be? Inside the capillary or stuck near the Bowman space? Let's assume this capillary is ruptured. Will I have fibrin clot like this? It will be in the Bowman's, right? So can I say, now something from outside has come to the Bowman, which will irritate the epithelial layer, parietal and visceral? It will, right? So this fibrin clot will kind of irritate the parietal epithelium and the visceral epithelium. So once it irritates parietal and visceral epithelium, obviously what will happen? They will respond. So what will happen is there will be hyperplasia of parietal epithelial cells. I'm writing P for parietal epithelium. That's the most important thing for me. Then in the all this happens in which place? Inside the capillary or in Bowman's? Bowman's place. Where does it happen? It happens in Bowman's. Bowman's. Perfect. I'll have hyperplasia of parietal epithelial cells. I'll have fibrin in the Bowman space. Will I have WBCs? Obviously, right? Because yes, the sir. capillary is ruptured. WBC can go outside. RBC can go outside, right? I can have WBCs. I can have RBCs in Bowman's. And last but not the least, my visceral epithelial cell also can undergo hyperplasia. But unfortunately, I cannot see them on a light microscopy. So all this happens in which place? Like you said, Bowman space. Okay. So tell me normally for you and me in a normal glomerulus, Bowman is clear, empty or has something in it? Clear. Perfect. Now, if all this happens, will Bowman be clear or not? No, doc. It will not happen, right? Perfect. Now, can I say, I'll just put a circle. This is the glomerulus. Will you agree with me? Yes. Yes, doc. Glomerulus. Now, are you seeing anything in Bowman space? Are you seeing blue color dot cells in the Bowman space? You do, right? Yes, sir. I'll use a different color. You tell me. Can I say this is ideally the Bowman space, but now I'm having something there. And this entire thing, if I say these are the thing, what's the hyperplasia of all those things, what we discussed, what is the shape of this? Crescent. Crescent, right? It looks like a crescent. What's the other name for RPGM? Crescentic glomerulonephrisis. It looks like a moon. Moon is crescent, right? So, and since it looks like a crescent, we used to call them in crescentic glomerulonephritis. Both are same. 
in microscopy i call it a crescentic glomerulonephritis because whatever happened at the bowman's parietal epithelium fibrin wbc hyperplasia is making a crescent now imagine it's a capillary loop a crescent from above is compressing will the capillary function it will not function that's why i have this problem a rapid change because someone is compressing a capillary from top you have veins in your finger right in your hand you press the veins from top blood will not pass through so if something is compressing the entire glomerulus from top or from the sides it will not function that's why i'm having a rapid proliferation or rapid progression here right so that's about rpg capillary rupture irritates the parietal epithelium fibrin clot i'll have hyperplasia of parietal visceral fibrin and wbc rbc which will go and compress in the form of a crescent we call them crescentic glomerulonephritis right now there is a way to classify crescentic glomerulonephritis or the types of rpg i'll just talk about the types because the types is based on a thing called as an immunofluorescence testing okay i'll just tell the three types now i won't give you the examples after uh, tomorrow's class that is we will look at fsgs tomorrow after that we will read about immunofluorescence have you seen green color images in kidney chapter black yes, and green that immunofluorescence i classify them based on immunofluorescence you will exactly tell me what all disease will happen in type 1 type 2 and type 3 once we know what happens in immunofluorescence it's simple it's very very simple type 1 will have something called as linear positivity type 2 will have granular positivity type 3 is called as posse immune what does posse mean posse means less right or no immunofluorescence okay that's what posse immune means right there are few diseases which we comes under linear which comes under granular which comes under posse immune we will see them when we complete immunofluorescence i want you to tell what comes here why to learn a classification when we can write it right you can easily write it you will know what will happen in linear you will know what will have granular you will say what will happen in posse immune right so that's how we classify rpg So this should be more than enough for you for RPG. It is just a fibrin clot which is coming outside and rupturing everything 